He's a businessman. He's a creative. I mean, an inspiration for myself and so many others. Today, I'm sitting with one of the most impactful agents in the sports history, in the sports industry today. He's the founder and CEO of Clutch Sports Group, Rich Paul. How are you doing today? Thank you for joining us. Oh, uh, thanks for having me. I'm I'm doing well. You know, uh, it's busy time right now, uh, draft week, but ultimately, when is it not busy? You know, so it's just <laughs> another one of those, another one of those weeks, but but excited to do this interview. Thanks for having me. Yes, thank you, man. I see, I'm, just, I'm glad that you found time in that busy schedule, so I, I much appreciate it. Um, with that being said, too, we're going to go ahead and hop right into it. So I would love to know, too, you know, kind of starting from the beginning a little bit, the where we come from, uh, the people that are around us as we grow up, you know, whether your parents, friends, things like that, those kind of things really help shape us into the man that we become or the woman that we become as we get older. Um, I would kind of love to know, you know, growing up, how did your upbringing really shape you into the man that you've become today? Oh, yeah, man. I think my upbringing was, it was complex. Um, and I say that in a good way, right? I think um, for me, I had what would be the love, um, but it, it but it was shown differently. It was shown in the form of accountability. It was shown in the form of no excuses and things of that nature. It was shown in the form of you know, discipline. It wasn't one of those, it wasn't the love that you would, that you would probably visualize most, you know, it was, it wasn't that soft, um, you know, kind of warm type of love. It was more of a love of protection, more of prepare preparation love, preparing you for the long haul, which I'm extremely appreciative of. And then in addition to that, I just had great examples, man. I had great examples of hard workers. I had great examples of defiant ones. I had great examples of, um, you know, what not to do, mm. uh, and which is which is just as important as the other things. And so, there was a world in which, you know, I just had this this richness of expert experience mm -hmm. and I think that really shaped me and molded me and, and then I had people around me that their care came from a place of um making sure that they held me accountable whether it was playing a sport and not really wanting to get up and go to practice this day or whatnot or whether it was in my school books uh, from an education perspective whether it was just principle right right from wrong very simple black and white type of things. And um, a lot of those things I I still have, I, I, are instilled in me today. And throughout my journey up to this point, I've used a lot of it and continue to use a lot of the things I learned um, in my younger days, for sure. I love that. All, and all those things are, are so important because they, you learn those things and they have that purpose in that time, but then they also evolve as you get older and you figure out where they where they serve a purpose in your life as you get older within yourself and with others. So I love that you were able to take those things and figure out how to implement those things in your life positively and, and put your own spin into it too. So that's, 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 I love that. I love that. Now, one thing too, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, when we hear your name, we think about the, the mass success, how everything has become like this. The business is crazy. It's legendary. We, we all look up to it, but I would love to know, you know, at what point in the creation of Clutch Sports Group, Clutch Sports Group, did you kind of know like this was the moment, like this was gonna become this is this is what it's gonna be today. Like, this is the moment where it's really gonna like, you know, become everything that you really imagined. And that struggle that comes with kind of maybe having some self doubt. How did you kind of battle through those kind of things as well? Well, I was always a pretty confident kid, even with the lesser. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I I had a tremendous belief in myself. I didn't know whether or not I could build the business that I've been able to build today, but I did have the confidence to try. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where a lot of people kind of go wrong. It's not about, there's no guarantees in life, right? We cannot guarantee that I'm going to be successful. You're going to be successful. You're going to make X amount of dollars, but, but you also can't ever get there without trying. And so my mentality was, 
I'm going to give it the best shot I have because this is something that I'm passionate about. This is something that I actually believe in because I think it's important for you to actually believe. It's one thing to try it for the sake of doing, but you have to st take a step out there and actually believe. And so I always believed and I was always okay with it being one or two guys. It didn't have to be 130 guys. It could be one or two. And I was really focused on building something that I thought did not exist in the marketplace. And we're still one of one, um, in my opinion. And so you see people try to go and get the token black guy for the face or the cool guy, you know, the guy they think has a cool jacket on because they think that's what my superpower may be in the jacket or something like that. Yeah. But it's not necessarily coming from the place that I'm coming from. And so having the company at its core have that in its DNA is something that, that can't and won't ever be duplicated. Um, and what I knew then, and it's changing now a little bit, the athlete's appetite for that education and for that, that accountability and, 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 and that, um, um, leading from a place of integrity and, and really uh, being taught things. They were, they, they were seeking that because it was a short mm -hmm. time in society in which people wanted to do and learn and be better, right? Social media hadn't really took on the stranglehold that it has on society today. And so the distractions and the, you know, the, the, the disconnect of, what has value and who has value and what doesn't and who doesn't, it hadn't been, you know, kind of distorted yet. Today, right. I think it's distorted more than ever, but when I first started, it hadn't been there yet. And so I took advantage of that. And, you know, we were able to represent the guys who, who wanted change, who didn't want to just only have their ego stroked and, and told, you know, their, I, I seen a comment by a guy I made the other day, and I was like, where would that even come from? Why would he even say that? But it also dawned on me, oh, he's with the company that that's, that's what they do. Like, they just mm -hmm. tell guys, you know, you're the best, you're this, you're that. And, and guys, you know, that's, that's part of it. That's also part of the industry. And so right. something that I refrain from doing and never wanted to do, but it's part of it. And so... I wanted to be different in that space. Um, but that's where, it, that's where it really came from. It really came from a very genuine place. It did. I think at the root of all that too, I think is the way you moved is always with intention. And I think that's like super important in that too. It's like you, the intention that you have was always pure as authentic and it was purposeful, especially for the meaning of progress amongst yourself and others. So I, I love that that's kind of what it always speaks to because then everything you create or stems from that is coming from like a good solid ground so I, I love that, that that was kind of like the mindset going into it too and the the confidence I think like you know it's even like it's good to even have that at a young age because some people even as adults they don't have that confidence we're still looking for that confidence so that's something that it is it, it's, it's like also refreshing to hear you had it at a younger age and that you can still continue to build that confidence as careers go on um yeah I think it's I even hard. Yeah. I had it with without having you know, most people gain confidence from having things, right? Mm. A nice car, a nice chain, a nice this, you know, um, come from a good family or my family has financially set and things like that. Right. I had the confidence without having any of that. Mm. And so pure confidence. And I, I don't think most people realize the importance of having pure confidence. And I tell my kids this, I tell people around my staff, it, it doesn't matter what you possess. Have a pure confidence internally of just on the wake up. And then everything else becomes a part of, it's a part of everyday life, but it's not the reason you're breathing, you know? Right, yeah. And so I, identified that at a very early age i love that. that's that's a gem right there if you because if you got it you ain't got to look for it basically like if you got if you yeah. got it when you wake up you ain't got to look for nothing all day because it's already there 
And it's even more important when those things go away, mm -hmm. it doesn't affect you, right? When the right. Great Depression happened, the people that actually had wealth, because they only had wealth and only knew wealth, when the wealth was taken away, they didn't feel the reason to live anymore. So they start jumping out the window and killing themselves. But no, it, you know, that's not the case. If you take these things away, I'm still me. You know, exactly. so I always have an opportunity ahead of me because I'm still me and I believe in me. So as long as I believe in me, those things can come and go. I love, I love, I'm going to let that read a little bit too. That, that, that's a good word right there for sure, for sure. Um, I actually, it actually takes me to my next point really good because, you know, we talked about that confidence, but at the same time, even being confident, you still get tested. You still have things still happen. People try, you know, mm -hmm. change the narrative or say things or things like that. And I remember in an interview you did, uh, you mentioned that the dents in a man's armor shows that he's battle tested, which I, I love because, you know, you, there's no good without the bad and those kind of things. All of it makes you better, helps you grow mm -hmm. learn from those things. And you're going on 11 years of Plus Sports Group, like mm -hmm. just phenomenal from the ground up. I would love to kind of know, you know, in this journey, how does that quote for you, uh, how can I explain this? How does this quote and its meaning continue to inspire you today? And how do you continue to instill that in the athletes, the people you represent? Yeah, it's just, I I, I think I, I think I've, I think I put that out prior to starting Clutch, if mm. I believe. If you look at the date, I think I tweeted that. I came back and said that in the interview, but I think I tweeted that prior to starting Clutch. And it's just part of life. You know, you have to have dents in your armor when you fought in the war, right? And it shows that you've been battle tested. I think it's very important. When I used to play a uh, mini league football for the Sims Raiders back in Cleveland, Ohio, a lot of the, the the talk was, you know, man, did you play today? Yeah, I played, but your uniform isn't dirty. So did you, <laughs> and were you just like running around, standing on the sideline, or did you actually try to make a tackle or whatever the case may be? And it was, and it was a, it was a thing of kids, you know, we, we're joking with each other, we're having fun, but today it allows me to understand why things happen the way they happen, right? It allows me to understand why today it, it, it went from when I first started the business, what I couldn't do, what I wouldn't do, and what I'm not going to do, to, oh, well, now, you know, you don't want to be with him because he has his own shoe and you're not going to have your own shoe. How could your agent has his, have his own shoe? Or, you know, you're not going to be with him because he's, he's doing a book or, He's on 60 Minutes or who his girlfriend is. You know, it, it went from all these things that I couldn't do to now they find a different way to try to discourage. And it just all boils down to who you are as a person. Again, going back to if I believe in me, I want someone that has done some things that I want to achieve as well. And if and if he's done them and been a part of a team and, and done those things, great. If he's done it for himself, in addition to being part of a team, then that's even better. Right. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so, but if you're looking at it from that lens, if you're looking at it out of a lens of, I want it to be about me and only about me and all the time, then I'm not going to be for you. And, and that's okay. You know? And so the dents in the man's armor, you know, as we walk this journey through life, you know, it's a war outside. And I've always been one to prepare for the war, not to battle. Because mm -hmm. if I prepare for the battle and then I get to the destination, it's a war, I'm underprepared. Mm -hmm. But I prepare for the war and I get there and it's just a fight, then I'm overprepared. I'd rather be overprepared for my positioning. And so mentally, I'm already there. When things happen, a guy left, okay, great, we can leave and you know they do whatever they do and pay the money and describe it or position it however they want to position it and it's fine you know it's it's okay because at the end of the day you can only represent those that see you of value if someone doesn't see you of value you can't ever just do things just for a financial gain because it may not be a game and it may include a finance for the moment but that doesn't mean that it's actually a game and so 
for me, it's not, it's never been only about the finance. I work a job. I want to be paid as we all do, <laughs> but this job comes with advising people throughout their lives. Right. And so if there's not a positive energy in doing so, if there's not a, when I come around, if you don't celebrate my approach or my existence in your space, but you tolerate it, I don't want to be tolerated, right? Especially mm -hmm. not by people I work with or work for during this time. I want us to celebrate each other because that's how it becomes above the money. Mm -hmm. right? And then that's how people aren't able to drive a wedge between you when it's about money or it's about ego, or it's about, you know, and that's how you're able to stand in the fire together. Because there's going to be times where everything is going right, and there's going to be times where some things may go wrong. But if we make a wrong turn, and we got to find our way back on the road to reach our destination, if we make a wrong turn in the car together, and then you jump out the car and leave me to get to the destination by myself, then that means we were never together, right? right? So, we're on this journey. That's what happens. And and so, but the agent, and I'm agent is one eighteenth of what I do, <laughs> but 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 the agent, when I am playing that role, that is a very important role that I really take pride in, I'm passionate about, but it has to come with a respect. It has to come with a a a, 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 a celebration of our existence and our partnership together. It can't come with a, you know, kind of like a, oh, uh, yeah, that's just my, no, because then that means you don't really value me per se. And so I can't just be a title or I can't just be a placeholder that don't work for me. And so it's fine, you know. I love it, man. That's, there's a lot, there's a lot of gems and like real, real, words in there i let i'm, I'm let that breathe too I, I don't want to like when, when i hear some stuff they're really deep i don't want to just talk all over i'm like hey yo take that in take that in because yeah, I mean, yeah it's real you know, it's real and, and that's i mean that's just i don't know another way I, mm. honestly i don't you know um life has really positioned things for me in that manner right and nothing has ever been sugar-coated despite what anyone may think it just hasn't and so I never approach it like that. You know, my daughter put out something the other day for Father's Day and she said, you know, happy Father's Day to the most serious but funny man at the same time, you know? <laughs> um, and I understood it right? because I, I try to prepare my kids for things that I know are, are, is up ahead, you know, that they may not understand. And I, I didn't understand, but my dad prepared me for, you know? Right, for sure. And I, I and mom. That matter. Go ahead. No, I, I, I just want to tap into something you said when you said, we're talking about agent, you said, you know, agent is one, makes like one eighteenth of the thing that you do. Mm -hmm. um, being a father, which is like another thing on top of that too. As with everything that you have going on, every endeavor, whether it be business, life, it for me, I feel like I don't know how I would not be exhausted at the end of the week or at the end of the day, or like how I would find a way for me to like keep my sanity or be fresh or like take care of myself, like mentally or physically, whichever it is. I would just kind of love to know, like between dedicating your time and spreading out your time in between all these things from, from career to family, and then it's taking care of your mental, physical, whatever it is. How do you kind of manage all those things and, and, and how to figure out how to invest those times without burning yourself out? Um, having a great team you know mm. i have a great team of people but at the same time you know if you talk to anybody on my team they'll tell you i don't i like i just don't i don't have that you know my mm. dad opened the store um there was no holidays there was he was never closed for christmas or thanksgiving or new years um he was open when when school was out because of there was a snowstorm he was open and so it was, again, we talk about the beginning of the call, the experiences and the examples that I had, it only showed hard work. Mm. And so that's all I know. I was just in London this week. I was in Denver, LA, London, back to LA, New York in a span of seven days, right? And when I was in London, when I first got there, flew 10 hours there, 
landed, didn't even check in my hotel and went to a meeting. That meeting lasted for 13 straight hours. Literally. I'm 13. tired just hearing it, like just hearing it. <laughs> and, and I know people will be like, like he's over exaggerating, but I'm not. It literally lasted for 13 hours. And, but it was very important. And, um, and then the following day I had a board meeting and uh, opening of the new London office for us. And again, and then I got on the plane and flew back home and landed and went directly to a workout for, mm -hmm. for, for one of the guys in the draft. So again, and again, took a, a father and son, a client to dinner that same night prior to going home. And the driver was saying, he said, well, you know, Mr. Paul, I thought we were going home. I said, well, yeah, we'll go home at the end of the day, but I can't go home now. I have to go to these couple stops. And then prior to dinner, I'll go home and take a quick shower. But I need you to take me to dinner and then bring me back home because I'll be done for the day. Right. And he's just driving. He's tired. But he's tired based upon, you know, but I just, again, you can't ever take things for granted. Um, I'm, again, when we talk about just whether I'm doing a book or whether I'm doing um, clutch athletics or, you know, whether I'm doing um, one of, a, you know, being on the board of these different companies, whatever it is, again, it's 110 for me. Hmm. Um, and I know a lot of my friends tell me to take time to myself and I have started to do that last year. I took a vacation this year. I'll take a vacation. I don't know if it's really a vacation because I'm always on the phone, but it is, I guess it's a vacation, you know? Um, but no, man, it's just, it's just, I think it's just part of my DNA. Um, and no amount of, of finance could change that. Mm -hmm. uh, I could never see myself just sitting around doing nothing. That just doesn't make sense to me. Um, I like to disrupt. I like to impact. Um, I like to challenge myself to to do new things. Um, because at this point, it is about the challenge of things, right? Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's about that, again, going back to that confidence and that belief in yourself that you can make make these things work. But that didn't come without a focus first. When I was much younger, prior to starting Clutch, I did everything even then. Music, I did sports, I did fashion, I did all these different things. So it's not, nothing I do now is different than any passion I had before. It was authentic. The difference is I had to gain a focus. And mm -hmm. I, like I tell my guys, you can be really good at a lot of things on the basketball floor, but it may not amount to anything. Right. Mm -hmm. You have a ton of talent. But if you want to have a career in the NBA, you have to be great at one thing. You never talked right. about a guy in the Hall of Fame and not identify one thing they were great at. Either they were a great rebounder, shot blocker, defensive player, offensive player, or pure shooter. You know, fact. That's a fact. That's just a fact, right? Very few guys were great at all of those things, mm -hmm. and if they were great at more than one, they're on Mount Rushmore of the sport. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's a ton of guys that was really good at everything, but not great at one thing, and so therefore, they didn't have a career. They had a job in the NBA, but they didn't have a career in the NBA. And that's the difference. And it's the same thing in life. You can be talented. You can do a lot of different things, but I didn't gain success until I gained a focus. Hmm. Right? Yeah. I mean, even, even I'm sitting here like still taking it in and like having it because it's true. Like, and when I focus, like that gives direction too. If you don't have nothing to focus on, then you're just doing things with no progression in a way too and, that and, focus. and again and this is about having people around you to give you the advice or to care for you in a way in which you're able to take things and not be defensive mm. 
you know, I have one brother, but I have a lot of guys I consider my brother. Right. And so I'm having a conversation with Maverick one day. And this was, we were young, man. This might've been 2005. Mm -hmm. And he always tells me like, he will always tell or tell anybody that Rich can do. I've never seen a person good at everything. I just never seen it before. He adapts, he does this, he does that. And then we were having a conversation one day. We were in our office in Cleveland. This was before, this was before, I want to say right before Brown ever went to one finals or maybe after he went to first finals. It's somewhere between 05 and 06 and 09. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, he goes, I've never seen someone as good as you in everything. You can go into a room, you know about this, you know about that, you know about and you have the confidence to talk about it in a way in which most people don't have it. But I'm going to tell you, bro, until you gain a focus on one thing, you're going to be really good, but you'll be great if you gain a focus on one thing. If you just took the time out to say, you know what, because you're so good at all these different things, it, it don't, it, it doesn't, it's not a burden to you to do all these different things. Mm -hmm. But if you just zone in, on one thing, I can almost guarantee, boom, you're going to hit, you know, it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. And that conversation is clutch, right? When I decided to just focus and zone in and zero in on building a business, look at the result. I didn't do music. I would, I wouldn't, I got so focused that I wouldn't even do football. I only did basketball. Had I chose to do football, the same time I started to do basketball, it's no telling what my football practice would be right. or not, or not. That's because true. I had such a laser focus on building a basketball business, that was it. It simplified my life. It simplified my business strategy. And it allowed me to, to really gain a focus and build. And then once I was able to build and build that brand and build that equity, in, in, in the marketplace in, in terms of brand awareness, perception, all those things, then adding the football element to it was actually much easier because, mm -hmm. you know, you have, you have the brand position already. And so again, back to those experiences, back to the, that accountability and, 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 and things of that nature. And so I never was in a position or had, have never been in a position where I'm getting too high on any type of pedestal not to receive information that can help me better myself going forward. It don't matter where it comes from. I want that information. It's, it's, it's what's crazy is I'm listening to you and at the same time I'm taking it in. And so when you're done talking, I'm just like, man, I'm, I'm still, cause that's, it's so true. And it's like, Man, I can sit there. I can sit here and talk about this all day because I, I, I so I so much gems and so much good food for thought right there for, as well. So I, I appreciate you sharing that. I know those are things that you've learned and things like that. So I, I appreciate you sharing that and still showing us how you incorporate that into not just the business but way of life today. So I thank you mm -hmm. for answering that for sure. Yeah, no problem. Now I want to dive into a little bit of the charity as well because it's community voices. We also make sure we, we do the work all around the clock. And uh, what we'll be doing is we'll be donating 20K to Chicago Youth Centers, uh, CYC. They've been around since 1956, and they have been uh, the place where Possibility lives, a trusted partner in Chicago, most invested in neighborhoods, ensuring that kids have a safe place that they can explore, to discover, to process, and ultimately to envision a bright future where they can create for themselves. Um, if you can kind of touch on what made you want to uh, choose that, uh, choose this foundation in particular and kind of what it means to you. Yeah, I, I think it, I think it, you know, what they, what, what, what's important to them. You know, I think kids understanding that anything is possible, you know, real, having real possibility is in reach. is so important. Mm -hmm. It is just so important. And if you look around today, the football fields are empty. The basketball courts are empty. The baseball diamonds are empty what kids value today has no value mm. and it's, it all stems back to they don't believe that this is possible they don't believe that actually being the next rich paul or better than rich paul 
is actually possible. And when you talk about being better than, it's not a thing of, I want to have more than the next person. No, I just want to be better positioned and better educated and better accepted based upon his travels and the things that he had to endure to make my role a little easier, where his role was harder. So better than in that perspective. A lot of times we 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 align better than with I want to be truly better than the next person. Well, to me, that allows that doesn't build community. Right. That's a cannibalistic um thought process because in order for me to be better than you in a lot of cases I have to get rid of you right which justifies the murders in our community and it's not even about anything right uh, we rather yeah. take a light than then then give a compliment mm. right we rather we 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 rather take a light than take a stand together on something that matters which is insane. And I come from the streets, born mm -hmm. and raised. But the world we live in today and how the youth thinks today is not there. It's not right. It doesn't make it doesn't make sense to me. It's not math. This is not the math I know. Maybe it's a new math that a calculator, that my TI 83 can't actually compute. You get what I'm saying? And yeah, so sure. To, to be able to support CYC and what they're about, um, it's authentic to what I'm about. Right. Because there are possibilities you can do. And so to provide that mentorship, the resources, and things of that nature to the youth, the underserved youth, and Chicago, for whatever reason, not that it could have been in any city, but the fact that it's in Chicago, we see what's happening in that city, mm -hmm. right? It's 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 such a beautiful city ex from its um, exterior point of view, but internally, it's rotten to its core. Based upon you know, there's 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 twenty thirty people dying a weekend, or right. at least shot a weekend. It's happened all over America, but that seems to be the headquarters of it. And there's so many thorough people to come out of the city of Chicago, a city I love and, and show me so much love every time I've been there over the, for the, forever. I mean, I, I remember my first trip to Chicago for a family reunion was in 1988. I remember it was like it was yesterday. I remember our t-shirts we had and I, I love that t-shirt because it was the family reunion in Chicago. Right. You know, and 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 so, um, you know, it again, it's not about a dollar amount or anything like that, but it's the fact that anytime you can help and save one life or give hope to one person, hopefully that starts to multiply, and we look back and it be, it's it's in droves because that's that's very important. We have to change just the way our our youth are, are thinking. They don't have any hope. They don't think it's possible. You know, my book coming out in October, uh, it's called Lucky Me. I'm hoping that people understand and read it and really digest the stories because it's going to give you an understanding that it's possible. Despite what anybody may say about you, may think about you, despite any position you may be in, it's possible. It's possible to do right. It's possible to to have peace in your life. It's possible to be happy without being filthy rich. It's possible. Mm -hmm. And the internet and social media sends a different message. The, right. the bad side of the internet and social media sends a different message to our youth. If I don't have all, I don't have nothing. Mm. That's not true. Not true, right. You know, because there may be some who proceed to have all and have nothing. Facts. We see that all the time. You mm -hmm. know, they got all the things, all the things that you could possibly imagine having, they have. But when it's all said and done, they don't have nothing because internally they're empty. 
And you can lie to a lot of people, but when you wake up and look in that mirror every morning, you can't lie to that person. You can't lie to him. Or her. And so I live my life like that. And so CYC, you know, any anytime I'm able to do something with the youth in any city, in any community, uh, I think it's important because I'm a part of them. I'm I'm I've I've been them. I've had the worst of the worst. And I stand here today with the understanding that it's just a dent in your armor. That's it. Mm -hmm. The worst thing is not the worst thing. That you know, you may think that, but I'm here to tell you it's not. I love man. You listen, I I I I'm here. I know I'm supposed to be here answering the questions, but I'm feeling like the student right now taking this in too, because that's all those things are so true. And like, you know, especially for me as I get older, the things that you're speaking about, of course, you know, they speak directly to the to the community, but even me being old, like that stuff still resonates and seeing that and seeing how like, you know, there's no way you it's harder. To me, it's hard, almost impossible to find the confidence that we spoke about earlier, especially in the age of social media, because like, you know, you're always looking for it in something else or seeing something else. So just everything that you just spoke to, I don't even want to speak over it too much because there's just so much meat to all that. So I thank you for speaking to that again. Oh, no, thank you. So also, you know, one thing I want to mention, too, is, you know, the clutch athletics piece of things, you know, the work that the collaboration the work you're doing with New Balance and the, the the product, what everything looking looks crazy. I was actually in New York the other day, saw saw some of the style. It looks amazing. Um, I would just kind of love, you know, in this new era of the, of, of the business and the direction, kind of what inspired you to start Clutch Athletics? And at the same time, you know, can you kind of speak to, you know, how the product speaks? And I know it's, you know, for the young athlete who, you know, is having that, finding that cross between performance and style, which is like basically the conjunction of sports and fashion today, can you just kind of speak to Clutch Athletics and kind of what it what it stands for, what it represents, and just like the experience so far? Yeah, I mean, the experience has been great. Uh, we wanted to be very purposeful with our with our intent. Um, I wanted to create a sportswear brand, which I felt gave the athlete its voice back. Mm -hmm. I thought that a lot of the brands that were built on the back of the athlete had started going away from the athlete. Um, in addition to Again, I've always been a consumer in the marketplace. I've always been someone who understood product mm -hmm. um, and apparel and, and things of that nature. And so um, wanting to start Clutch Athletics um, or just Clutch in general and then Clutch Athletics from a sports apparel brand perspective, I felt like could be a freshness in the marketplace. I felt like the marketplace was getting pretty redundant and the consumer you know has changed his mindset in terms of what they want to wear there's a lot of more free spirited people out here there's a lot of people that want to feel like they can grow with the brand and actually believe in the brand so I wanted to create something that people actually could grow with and believe in and I just didn't want to focus on the athlete when you talk about the athlete I'm talking about the human mm as an athlete, right? And so you have the actual athlete that plays the game and then you have the human side of the athlete. And so how do we integrate that? How do we take that, that mom who's scrambling every morning to get the kids off to school and get herself off to work? No different than that quarterback who's scrambling to improvise a blown play to make sure to get his, you know, his team down the field for the next first down and or a touchdown per se. And so integrating those two things and telling that story because everyone's an athlete. Anytime you cover the ground, whether it's in life, in business, or in your actually in your actual sport that you play, that's a very athletic thing to do. And so really creating this visual and this understanding of the new athlete, that person that's kind, loving, unified, trusting each other, you know, building and, 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 and having the mentality of community, right? And then being honest with yourself and with others. And so those are the pillars where you talk about what it takes to be clutch and, and being, you know, that, that athlete holistically. And then, you know, the fun part got into it of creating the style and the product. And we wanted to really, crawl before we walk but now 
we're starting to have to take a light jog because the demand people, you know, people want it. And we have to build out the, 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 the line and things of that nature. And we will. And so um, not trying to necessarily compete with any of the, the existing, you know, motherships out there, um, but more so just really creating something new and fresh and purposeful with the ability to grow in a very authentic way. You know, I want the consumers to tell us where to grow. I don't want to really just jump out there mm -hmm. and do certain things. I want the consumer to tell us where to grow. And so that's why you see just a small skew of things, uh, really basic for, for right now, but really focusing on the quality of it. Um, and then you'll start to see a transition of where you'll start to see just capsules of things that may say clutch athletics and you'll see things that just say clutch, but it's all one brand and it'll all be co-branded with new balance. I felt like new balance was the right brand partner just in terms of their patience as a brand, their, their purpose of being true to themselves. And, and now you look at new balance today, they never wavered, they never changed. They never got gimmicky or anything like that. And then boom, if you walk down the street today, you see a lot of new balance. A lot. A lot more than what you were used to. And more and more importantly, you're not, it's not just um what I would say targeted, or it's not just kind of um positioned in DC or, or Baltimore or Virginia or Philly or parts of New York. It's starting to spread across America. Right. You know, when I was in London, it's there. It's there in a major way. And so I believe the next 20 years are going to be 20 years of New Balance really having a, its moment, right? And rightfully so. Everyone gets their turn. And so I yeah. wanted to make sure that we partner with someone who, number one, believed in us, mm -hmm. uh, shared the same values and things of that nature. And also, number two, who can enhance some of the things that, that we wanted to do and educate us along the way. Um, because, you know, you gotta, you know, these things are very fragile, hmm. right? So, but we're extremely excited um, about what's, what's up and coming. We wanted to be in the community. We wanted to be cool. We wanted to be affordable. We wanted to be accessible. This whole idea of, I want something, but I gotta pay a 10X to get it. That's not how these businesses were built. I know that for a fact. They were built right. the other way, where it sold out because everybody had it, right? And everybody had the ability to get it. You can go to four or five malls and get what you, you might have to go to the fifth mall, but you but you had to get it, you know? And so it was, um, it's something I'm really excited about, it's something I'm passionate about. And I think the consumer is going to find it really cool. And uh, so I look forward to that. I'm excited for it. Like yeah, been watching it and looking for it. I, I also, and it's not a collab. It's not. I think people yeah. sometimes get it confused. It's not a collab. It's not. It's a partnership. It's a partnership. real partnership. Sure. It's a real co brand. Um, we're gonna be around. We're not. We're not going anywhere. It's not a for the moment thing. It's it's a forever thing that we're mm. that we're positioning, and um, you know, we're really excited about it. We're going into a hundred doors at the end of this month. And so we'll start to be more available to people. And obviously you can go on newbalance.com and get it right now or go on Clutch Athletics IG and whatever you, you know, you hit, you can shop to, to buy. Um, or JD Sports when we come on. Or, JD and JD Sports as well. And JD <laughs> Sports as well. And thankful to, again, to, to those like, like JD Sports who have been, you know, really supportive of the brand. And so I'm just excited. You know, I was, I walked past the JD Sports the other day in London, and you know I, I envision having Clutch Athletics in the window, and things of that nature. And so, Love again, it. it's just these things where, again, you never know where life takes you, and you know I, the team we've been able to build um, at Clutch Athletics is great. You know, it's 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 they are, they are great, and so. You know, I'm I'm excited about what's coming. They they show me little stuff, little sneak peeks of stuff, and I get excited about it. But 
you know, I'm really looking forward to to the end of this month and, and seeing how things perform. And, you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident we'll do well. Rich Paul, thank you so much for literally blessing me with your presence and every the, all the wisdom and things, man. Thank you so much. I'm excited myself just to see how this goes. Not even to see how it goes, but to see how the excitement continues to build, especially as we begin, you know, to, to launch it as well. So, Rich Paul, thank you so, so much. I appreciate your time. I appreciate everything that you shared. And, um, yeah, man, Yo, thank you the support all the way over here. Appreciate it, Devin. Thanks for all the support, man. Appreciate you. Always. Thank y'all for tuning in. To another thank you to JD Sports for having me. Thank you. Love it. There we go. I'm not even going to breathe on that. We're going to let that live. Appreciate y'all. Take thank care. You. See y'all next time.